The important thing for us to remember is that this is the big story of God. Not of me, not of you, but of God. We started a few weeks ago with Abraham and learning that he was going to be blessed by God and that therefore he was to be a blessing to everybody else. Then he has a son, Isaac, and it looks like the blessing is going to stop there. But last week we met Isaac's wife, Rebecca. And this week we're going to meet their kids who again move the story forward. And that's why it's important that we know the story because you and I are story carriers. We move the story forward. We're each characters in the great big story of God. Anyway, they're 40 when they get married, uh, Isaac and Rebecca. They're 60 when they have kids and they don't have one, they have two. They have twin boys, Esau and Jacob. Esau is the first one out and he's covered in hair. And so they call him Harry, that's his name. They call him Esau, which means Harry. I mean, imagine, imagine introducing your baby to, oh, he's so cute, he's so cute, what's his name? Harry. So anyway, Harry uh, grows up to become a man covered in hair, who's like a wild, rugged Bear grills. He goes out hunting and shooting and fishing. He likes it in the outdoors. He would manage fine living off anything he could hunt out in the fields for days and weeks at a time. His younger brother, Jacob, who comes out of the womb, like holding onto his heels, he's not far behind. Jacob is much more of a bookish character, a stay at home character. Somebody who likes the finer pursuits in life, doesn't enjoy going out and hunting. He is his mother's favorite. He stays around the kitchen and helps out with all the stuff that the women folk of the tribe are doing. Whilst his older brother Esau is the favorite of his father. Now, there's another thing going on. In that culture and in that time, if you are the first born, then you are the most important of all the brothers and sisters, of all the siblings. You get a birthright blessing. It's like if you're the firstborn, you're guaranteed to get at least two thirds of all your parents' money in their will. Doesn't matter how many other siblings you have, it's just gonna be split. The rest will be split between them. But if you're the eldest, you get it all. You're first invited to the table. You get the first dibs on anything you want. You are blessed beyond the others. We don't really have it so much now. It's like, though, you can see it in Prince Charles being the heir to the throne. He's the firstborn son of the queen, and so he is going to get pretty much everything she already has. Now, of course, there are other perks to being a minor royal and being one of his brothers or sisters, but not nearly as many as it is if you're the heir. It's like when Mustafa says to Simba in The Lion King, One day, Simba, the sun will set on my time here and will rise with you as the new king. All of this will belong to me? If you're the firstborn son in that culture, you are the heir. Now, one day, Jacob is inside the kitchen and he's cooking a lentil stew. I mean, nothing says delicious like a lentil stew. He's cooking this lentil stew and then in from a day out hunting, an unsuccessful day's hunt, comes his older brother Esau. Esau sees this delicious lentil stew and says, oh my goodness, I'm famished. I've been out all day, I've been hunting, I haven't caught a single thing. I've expended all this energy out in the, uh, out in the heat and out in the sun. I'm exhausted, I'm gonna pass out from hunger. In fact, I think I'm gonna die of hunger soon. Give me some of that delicious looking stew. Jacob, who is a bit of a deceiver, who's a bit of a wily, canny, crafty character, says to him, yeah, sure, you can have some of this delicious stew, but only if you pass over to me your birthright, your inheritance, your double blessing. In effect, he asks him, make me the heir. Everything that you would be getting Esau, pass it on to me. Esau, who's this alpha male hunter who's just led by his stomach in all decisions, says to him, well, I'm going to die anyway of hunger and then all of that stuff I've got is of no use to me. So sure, have it all. Just give me some stew. And so Jacob takes the, the blessing, takes the birthright, becomes in effect in law the eldest son, the heir, and then gives his brother some of the stew. We're going to pick up some of that story later on in subsequent weeks. 
But here's something that's really important to remember. It's a little part of the story that's going to keep recurring and it's just popped its head above ground. That the New Testament writers write in much later on in the Bible, much later on in the story of God, say this. If you want to understand God, then Jesus has shown us that the best way to understand God is like a good father. If you want to understand you and you want to understand the relationship between you and God, then the best way to do it is you're like you're like a child of God, but not just like the second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, five billionth child. You're like an heir. You're like a firstborn. You're like a favorite. Everything that God has, the blessing, the goodness, the joy, the grace, the peace, it's yours. You are an inheritor of that. That is such a great leveler. It means there aren't people who are closer to God than you. There aren't favorites that he has. There aren't people that are better at this than you. He views you as a child more than that, a favorite child. And that is an incredible foundation stone of the story, that you are blessed.